Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the restoration that I'm going to be doing on this 1970s spun fiberglass outdoor setting. So as you can see, it's a bit of a different style than what you sort of see these days. It's something that I've definitely seen around when, I've been, when I was younger. I've seen this kind of stuff around and it's sort of getting a bit old and yeah, it, it's about time it gets a restoration. So I'll take you guys right through from start to finish all the products that I'm going to use and the steps that I'm going to take. So we're painting most of it white, however the base of this table here is going to be painted lemon yellow. Um, the first step I'm going to be doing, as you can see now, I'm using high pressured water hose just to clean off all those cobwebs, any dirt and dust and anything like that that's uh, accumulated over the years. Next up, I'm assessing our damage. We've got a few bits of damage on this table. There was a couple of small spots on a few of the chairs too. The chairs weren't in such as bad nick as the edges of this table. It's just common as, as people move it and it probably turns to winter. It probably gets put in the, the garden shed or something for, for winter and it just gets chipped on the edge when it gets put on the corner. So there's a few on the top there. Um, you can see that on the top here we've sort of got a bit of a um, imitation leather type of a uh, ripple effect to it. So we want to make sure we keep that. We can't just be um, too coarse when we're sanding into that. What I'm doing here, I've got some 320 grit on the orbital sander um, and I've also got the interface pad on. So there's a foam piece of pad in between the hard pad from the orbital sander and my sandpaper. So it's going to make it not quite as aggressive on those edges. Um, it's pretty important you do that or you can sort of get flat spots. Um, any Australian will know what I say when I mean you'll get like a 50 cent piece effect. You'll sort of get the um, uh, just flat spots on it. Um, so just going around the entire thing. I'm, I'm happy that I can uh, give it a quick sand over the top, like just a, a quick sand down over the top sections, but I really don't want to hang in one spot for too long or else I, I think I'll run the risk of losing that effect that was on the top there. Um, just running my hand over it as well, just making sure there's no rough spots and uh, get, next up I'll be giving it a good dust off and um, be uh, mixing up some uh, lightweight polyester filler and we'll be putting it into any of our imperfections there. Now, uh, what I'm doing here, I've got the um, uh, softback sanding sponge, 320 grit is what I'm using, and these things are supple, so they'll uh, get into all the edges, sort of, you could replace that for a bit of scotch bright, but I find this stuff's better, it will uh, sort of scuff into it a little bit more, it'll take that top coat of paint off. So this is a brand of the polyester filler I'm using, it's the Worth brand. I found this is actually one of the best on the market. Um, basically, you can put this stuff in, you don't even need to prime it. That's how good it is. Um, I'm going to, but it's good enough that you don't even need to put any primer over the top of this. It's uh, very fine. It doesn't have. It's not very porous at all. Um, some of the rough fillers that you get, they're, they're quite porous, and if you paint over them, then they'll suck suck all the life out of the paint, whereas this stuff's quite good. Now you really don't need much hardener in it at all. I think it's a uh, ratio of about 1%, and uh, if you do over harden it, then you do also run the risk of getting a bit of bleed through, so they've got a lot of um, bleachers and stuff like that, and peroxide type things in the uh, hardeners, um, so that uh, colour will actually bleed through even when you paint over the top of it. So. On the top here, I'm being extremely careful. I'm taking an extra couple of minutes to apply that um, filler because I'm actually putting it into the low spot first and then I'm actually pulling it out of any of those um, uh, ripple effect areas, any of those low spots that have that um, leather type of uh, uh, effect on it. Same thing on these edges. Taking time just to wipe it right in so it's going to be... There's going to be enough in there, but not too much that it's going to take forever to sand out. Um, you know, if you just uh, put it in too quickly, you might find you sand it out and it's, um, there's not quite enough in there and you have to reapply anyway. So you may as well just take that couple of extra minutes to make sure you get it right the first time. So as you can see in there, put it all in. And this is the best thing about working on stuff like this. You get to sit down for a couple of minutes. Isn't that just awesome? So, yeah, just going over all of these chairs as well. Um, so, spun fiberglass is definitely the first time I've ever um, experienced this kind of uh, material before. Um, most of the fiberglass is done in sheets, but this stuff, um, if you look up close at it, um, it's, yeah, it's like these big strands of fiberglass. They must just uh, 
I don't know exactly how they make it. Hey, if you guys do know how you make how this stuff is actually made, make sure you let everyone know in the comments. But it looks like they're long strands, and then they must pour the resin into. It must just be a big mold or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't done that much fiberglassing in my time. I've started to do a bit, a bit more of it recently. More just fiberglass repairs, not so, not so much the actual fabricate and the actual fabrication and uh, manufacturing of it. So. Once I'm uh, happy that I've sanded all those uh, p pieces of fine filler out, I'm then just going around, just first off just giving it just an ever so light coat of 1K primer here. Um, you can replace that for 2-pack primer if you like, um, but I just decided that 1K primer would do the job. Uh, so first coat, I just put it on light. If there was going to be heaps of air pockets and bubbles and stuff like that, I was probably just going to stop. So that's it, I'm going to use 2-pack primer on this instead. Um, however, I found that 1K primer did the job just fine. Um, I've then sat that down out in the sun for about half hour while I was doing the prep work on the um, rest of them and then brought it in the booth so now I'm happy enough that that's dry enough to bring back into my spray booth and mask off. So I still haven't even bothered sanding that primer yet. I'll, I'll, I will give that a quick scuff back. Just with another piece of uh, 320, you could replace that for 400 or something on one of those uh, soft back sanding sponges. Um, and yeah, I've just got it in the booth here. You can see I've sat it up off my floor so it's not on the water. Um, I like to put a bit of water on my floor just to help with the dust. Uh, this, this type of booth, it definitely does help uh, having a bit of water on that floor just uh, to stop any dust from circulating and coming back up into the job. So. Um, the paint I'm using is just a lemon yellow. I'll give you guys a look through um, how to do some of the mixing and a few just a little tips. I basically storyboarded this whole job from start to finish. I grabbed a little bit of footage out of every stage, uh, edited the whole uh, video up, and I've, uh, this is what I've come up with. Um, I hope to keep you guys interested in the entire video, and I hope you guys watch right through to the end. So, yeah, just uh, making sure I mask that up now. Um, it's just so that I don't have all this uh, yellow paint um, on it when I go to sand the top down and it's just going to be annoying. Um, so yeah, here we go, We've, we're coming up and mixing the paint up. DuPont Centauri 500 is the range, it's, uh, it's their top of the range 2K automotive paint there. Um, I ordered in one litre. Hindsight, I probably didn't really need it, but because we um, don't have the mixing system um, and this is the kind of thing when you're painting furniture and stuff like that, um, that you really uh, do go through a fair bit of paint. Um, so as you notice there, I did give my colour a, uh, a check the colour before use, always check your colour. So the customer came in and picked that yellow card out of our colour cards and then we got it mixed up through, um, through the DuPont system. I obviously stirred the paint very well before putting two to one ratio of two pack hardener. Um, make sure you always stir your paint. Uh, yeah, it's something that I don't usually mention in my videos, but um, I guess I just take stuff like that for granted. I'm tipping that 99.9% .9 of people would do that, but um, a customer of mine recently come in and we were sitting down after work, having a beer and having a chat, and um, he was telling me, and he showed me these photos of a friend of his who's built this really nice sort of a open wheeler type race car type thing. He's built the whole thing, it's cost him heaps of money, and he decided, I've done the rest of the work, I want to do the paintwork myself. Gone and got this really nice colour, I think it was Tiger Micro, holding colour. Gone and painted it, and he didn't even stir the colours colour up. So he's gone and put all the parts back together, and it's just like black and orange and white. It's a totally different colour, so... Make sure you stir your paint. Um, so starting off upside down first, I want to put it up this way so that I'm, I'm just going around first. As you saw me, um, I had the gun on uh, spot setting. So um, uh, on the back of that gun, you can see me twisting it around there. I've turned it right in, if you turn on this gun anyway, if you turn it right into the right hand um, thread, so that's clockwise. If you turn it that way, it'll spot, it'll turn that um, fan into a spot rather than a full fan. So I did that just to get uh, right up underneath that table and yeah basically it's very hard to get coverage because there's so many different angles that you've got to aim at um, and that is why I ordered that little bit extra paint in. Um, 
you know, it, it's actually quite an expensive colour. I didn't realise how expensive yellow was going to be. Just for the yellow one litre, that was about $150 of paint there. All up, this uh, this setting's got about five to $600 worth of paint on it, if you're including the hardener and stuff like that. So, you know, when you're using these kind of automotive um, products, you will get a top quality finish. However, you will pay for it. Um, I would like to make a quick mention also to the environment that you're going to do this kind of painting in. I guess some people may be attracted to this video if they have um, an outdoor setting. You know, you might just think, oh, I can do this kind of thing at home. I really wouldn't recommend spraying any two-pack paints at home. And I, I think you would really struggle to do a job like this if um, you didn't have a spray gun set up. You really want to spray with. So basically, um, by the time I had all this painted, there was white all over the floor of my booth. My filters were covered in it. And I would say you're running at about a 40% efficiency. Um, whereas if you're painting a car, which is a flat panel, you'd be running at say 70 to 75% efficiency. So, you know, most of that paint's going where you want it. Whereas with this, most of the paint is actually ending up on the floor and in the filters. So um, you do get a lot of paint wastage. Always wear your personal protective equipment as well, which is your PPE. So, you know, if I'm wearing my gloves, I've got my suit. Uh, you know, I really should be wearing a full uh, leg suit as well with the legs and that, but um, it's too hot to do that sometimes. Sometimes we'll throw the jacket away too and it's just too hot. Um, but always wear my respirator. If it's too hot to wear your respirator, it's too hot to paint. So come in the next morning and do it if it's that hot. Um, yeah, gloves, keep your hands clean. And um, yeah, so basically I painted that. Um, I used Fast Hardener, Fast Activator in it. And I just whacked it out in the sun for about two or three hours. Uh, it was a pretty nice warm day here as well, so that helps it drying. Um, I've got all these other parts set up, ready to go in the spray booth, all those chairs. And there's a couple of uh, sort of pot plant holders as well, which I was able to set them up, get them ready to paint while I was waiting for that to dry. And then I'm obviously giving it quite a good mask up as well. Um, I really, The last thing I want is any white to go on that yellow, which I've just spent a couple of hours painting. So um, all up, I was able to do this job in just probably seven or eight hours. So basically a day's work sitting there. Um, in uh, in the correct environment, if you've got the right tools, there's no reason you, you shouldn't be able to do the same thing. However, if it's a little bit colder, you may want to leave that yellow overnight to dry, either that or find a way of heating it up with some heat lights or something like that. Um, obviously, just be careful when you're doing that kind of thing, not to get it too hot because you can blister the paint. Um, so, you may have noticed um, I was busy talking about something else at the time. I got up close uh, there after painting the um, first coat of yellow. I think I'll give you another look at it again later on. But the, because it's fiberglass, over the time, the fibers have sort of started to peel away a little bit from the um, structure itself. So it's turned into little uh, hairs and little fibers that sort of a bit of an eyesore. So the best way I saw to fix it was to put my first coat on and then just get my finger and after that first coat it's turned it sticky and you just get your finger to push it back onto the area that it's meant to be on so um, yeah I just found that that was the best way again here just finishing my masking off and putting this um, masking right up underneath because I've actually um, you think it's like masked right up the top but then it can actually go down and come back up because uh, of the airflow in the spray booth. You can get little sort of whirlwinds and turbine type things going up on there. Next up, um, I'm giving a good wipe down with some wax and grease remover um, in that squirter bottle there. I find those squirter bottles are quite good. Um, they save on rags so you don't have to have a wipe on and wipe off. And they also, I think they use less uh, wax and grease remover as well because they only apply exactly the amount that you need. Um, rather than still having a rag that's still drenched in the stuff when you finish off. So here we go, I'm mixing up the white. Again, always check your colours, make sure your colour is uh, right before you paint. Once you've used that paint, no one's going to uh, respect, uh, accept any responsibility for wrong colour matches. 
So that's another good little tip. Um, after you mix, you just you know wipe the excess off the stick with the lid, and then you uh, give that a wipe down with the um, rag. Put it in there, and we'll be able to start tipping our painting and just uh, use it at a two to one ratio for this product. Now um, you might look at me and say, oh, you know. There's going to be heaps of paint down the side of here. This is a great little trick. I was taught this when I was a first year apprentice. Everyone, I'm sure, everyone's seen the old paint cans that you can never get the lid back on because there's paint built right up around that rim. Get a rag, fold it up into, um, just get those little edges and fold them right up into that rim and then uh, move them towards each other and the excess will actually flow back into the can. You'll be able to get that can, uh, that lid on and off for forever. Um, so that's definitely a good one to um, to keep in mind. So there you go. There's the two double five MS. It's the hardener I'm using. As I mentioned earlier, two to one ratio. And I found on this day it was sort of 35 degrees. There was no need to put any reducer in it. It was thin enough as it is without it. Um, on the colder days, sometimes a little bit of fast reducer might help. Um, it'll help it dry, it'll help it evaporate, and it can also help stop getting runs because it's not staying wet as long because the, um, the thinners will evaporate up out of it. Also, um, the colder it is, the thicker your paint's going to be, so you, you'll naturally need a touch more as well. So again, just giving it a really good dust down. All those chairs in the background that I gave them a really good dust down then came back to the table and run that tack cloth over it again. And here we go with our white. Now you take note that this first coat of white, I'm really not going too heavy at all. Um, you don't want to put your first coat on too heavy. It can, it can sometimes lead to a few different problems like uh, fish eyes, silicon holes and stuff like that can end up opening up more likely of that. Um, it can get runs and there's, yeah, there's a load of different things. You've, just sort of medium wet, I guess. Um, you don't even need full coverage on that first coat. If I can still see through to a few bits of that primer and a few bits of that cream color in the center, it's no big deal. Um, we'll fix that up in our second coat. Now, I'm not gonna include all of the footage of these uh, chairs, because I can tell you now, I was in there just painting these chairs for, I, I reckon it was about two and a half hours, all in all. There's so many different angles you've got to get to, and don't forget, there's two coats on the whole, every single one of those chairs on every single area. So <clears throat> you can really see that I'm sort of struggling, and well, I'm not—I know what I'm doing. So it's no big deal, but um, yeah, just struggling to get coverage on certain areas, and you just got to go around and around and around. Um, I, I just, you know, <laughs> I must say, when I first uh, saw this outdoor setting, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's an outdoor setting, it's nothing special, but. After spending so much time working on it, I actually really grew to love them. And I thought, you know what, <laughs> I hope she invites me over for a cup of tea in the backyard after this. So, um, yeah, I, I think they're actually quite stylish. They've really grown on me. Um, again, let me know what you guys think about this. If your mum had one of these back in the day, let us know in the comment section. Um, so, yeah, just um, painting, painting, painting. I'm adjusting that fan again, same as I did on the underneath of the table. So to get um, all of those inside areas there, you'll see me winding that fan control right back into spot section. And then when I get to these uh, outer areas, I'll have the fan on full open. So just again, I think there must have been a bit of a leaf or a cobweb or spider's web or something that um, I sort of missed in there. So yeah, with spray painting, you've always got to be watching what you're doing. Um, checking over your work and yeah, just uh, ready to um, yeah, I guess just um, fix something and just be on the ball. You, you can't really just um, sort of mind wander and drift off and think about what you're going to do on Saturday night with your mates. So I think everyone's been there, the first year apprentice and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm actually looking at um, making a video about a, a automotive apprenticeships and spray painting apprenticeships and stuff like that so um, that's something to look forward to in the future I've got loads and loads of ideas of videos in this for this channel in the coming years don't forget this is only just into my second year now and um, yeah I'm really happy with the way this channel's grown I've got a very good support base um, another thing I'd like to mention previously my uh, viewers from mobile devices were never able to click the videos at the end of each video of mine. Um, 
YouTube have now come up with a new feature which is called cards and I'm able to add a bit of a annotation in there for you guys so that uh, you can finish watching one video and then click to watch the next one so if, if you tap your screen up the top right on my uh, phone anyway there's a little eye with a circle around it and um, an eye icon T tap on that and you'll be able to head on to my next video I've actually had a couple of viewers uh, mention about that that they, they couldn't um, click onto my videos at the end of uh, any of my videos so there you go, this is the second coat of white going over the top of the table. What I'm going to end up doing over this, um, because um, I just liked the the lady that we're doing this car for, uh, sorry, car, the lady that we're doing this outdoor setting for, She just she's from the same part of the world as me, from Melbourne, and I just took a liking to her, so I said, you know what we're going to do for you? We're going to put some clear coat over the top of that, uh, that white. So basically you're getting it flow coated. The clear coat that I'm using is a DuPont 696S clear. It's, it's a bit of a semi-ceramic clear. It goes really hard. It's got a good UV resistance. It's got a very good scratch resistance to it too. So uh, I've, I decided that the easiest way to do that flow coating was going to be um, put these first two coats of uh, color on. So we've got coverage on it now. And then all I did was paint all of these parts. So as I said, it was probably about two hours to paint all these chairs. And then after two hours, I mixed my clear up, cleaned the gun back out again, and then came back over to that, um, that table and put a good two coats of clear over it. So one coat and then left that 10 minutes and then put another coat on. Um, I'm, it's still in the window of you go, it's, it's wet enough that you're going to get adhesion, so you won't have to sand it back down, but it's dry enough that it's not going to start dulling off. So that's the clear that I use. I just thought I'd take you guys back over and give you guys a look. Same uh, hardener. It's a universal hardener that goes um, with the DuPont, goes in uh, your clear coat and your um, 2K color as well. So that makes it easy. Um, and then we go on with this flow coat I was mentioning about. I tell you what, this really got a very nice gloss to it. There's not much, I, I was struggling to find any pieces of dust in it and it's got a really nice deep shine to it. So, you know, this isn't necessary, um, don't get me wrong, this is not at all a necessary stage. Um, however, I just decided that I wanted to do it because I, I do take a lot, obviously a lot of pride in my work and I like to get the best uh, results for our customers. We're new in business, so, you know, you want to get your name out there as a reputable um, company, not... A, a rushing company that's just going to do stuff cheap and um, poor quality. That's after my first coat. Um, it still needs another good wet coat after that. I think it does anyway. As you can see here, there's a little bit of a run there. There you go. Even the pros get runs. My grandpa, he was a panel beater spray painter for years. Um, and uh, he always even said, he said, if you don't get a run every now and then, you're not getting it on wet enough. And I totally agree with that. You know, um, yeah, just, I like to smash the paint on. I always like to push the limits. I like to push it as far as I can go. Um, okay, I'll give you guys a quick run through the settings on this gun. I've got, um, I usually use this gun for just base coats and stuff like that, so I actually had the settings left as if I was painting base coats. So I've got the fan fully wide open, and that fluid needle is wound right out. Basically, it's maybe two or three threads in, so it's just, just hanging in there. And um, yeah, pressure settings, it was at about sort of 25 PSI. So if, if you have your pressure too low, you'll get thick orange peel. If you have it too high, you're just gonna waste too much paint. All that paint's just gonna end up in the air um, because the pressure's too high. So it's important to get your pressures right as well. So there you guys go. That's um, after the second coat of clear, we've got a really nice gloss to it. Uh, it's, it's got that depth to it that it didn't have before. And the rest of these parts, uh, the rest of these um, things are looking quite nice. So. Yeah, I'd definitely be happy to have this in my backyard anyway. Top quality automotive paint going on it, and a top quality finish. It's good for me too because, uh, you know, it's something different. I, I'm used to just painting cars, and it's just, um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun for me to paint some different stuff. 
and I'll give you guys a look at it when it's all finished off. There you go, it looks really nice. I think that the yellow touch that she um, came up with for the bottom of the table there is, um, yeah, makes it look quite nice. So, there you guys go. Check out these videos at the end if you haven't already seen them. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production.